What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, you guys probably already know, I just recently got done reviewing the brand new 2022 Kia Carnival. Also, a couple months before that, I did have the opportunity to review the new 2022 Honda Odyssey as well and so i thought it only appropriate to do a proper comparison between these two so when it comes to these two minivans they are very similar in many ways but very very different as well so if you're considering one of these two i am going to lay out the 10 key differences between these two options here hopefully this will better help you make a decision at the end of it and so i'm going to start with number 10 working my way to number one with a clear winner at the very end of this video but having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and start with number 10 on my list being the price and so when it comes to the MSRP for the Kia Carnival, that pricing is going to start at $32,100. On the other hand, when it comes to the new 2022 Odyssey, that one is going to start at $32,290. So although they are nearly identical for the sake of my friendly little competition here, Carnival is going to be $190 less. Therefore, Carnival is in the lead, one to nothing. Next, moving on to number nine, I am going to compare the power differences between these two and actually quite similar, believe it or not. Kia Carnival is powered by a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 290 horsepower, 6,400 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque coming in at 5,000 RPM. Zero to 60 time for that one comes in at 7.5 seconds. And some of you may be wondering, what does it matter zero to 60 time for a minivan? If you have to merge into traffic on a busy highway, you definitely to make sure you're merging into anybody where you're going to get rear-ended so it is important still that a minivan is plenty quick but on the other side of things 2022 odyssey once again is powered by a 3.5 liter direct injected v6 this one puts out 280 horsepower at 6,000 rpm identical torque 262 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm but thanks to the transmission and gearing for that one zero to 60 time comes in at 6.9 seconds so Pretty substantially quicker actually when you compare those two so therefore odyssey is going to take the win here putting us at a one-to-one -one tie next let's go ahead and move on to number eight and that is going to be the braking comparison and so this is important if you have to come to a quick stop you do want to make sure you can come to the quickest stop possible so you don't end up rear-ending the person in front of you and so when it comes to the kia carnival up front you're going to find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.8 inch solid rear discs when it comes to that 60 zero stopping distance that is going to come in at 118 feet which i gotta say very very respectable a lot of the suvs that i drive they'll come in mid to upper 120 some of them even in the 130s even 139 feet i know for the volkswagen atlas so 118 feet is dang good if i'm being honest but anyways 2022 odyssey up front you're going to find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes plenty respectable coming in at 124 feet but six feet shorter from 60 is going to be the kia carnival so therefore carnival is going to come to a quicker stop putting us at a score of two to one carnival is in the lead next on my list i am going to compare the cargo space also very important comparison when it comes to owning a minivan when it comes to the kia carnival behind that third row that is going to come in at 40.2 cubic feet however total cargo space is going to come in at 145.1 cubic feet for comparison's sake most suvs let's say the kia telluride or the honda pilot they're going to come in at mid to upper 80 so like 84 to 87 cubic feet so 145.1 in these vans is going to be pretty substantial when it comes to the difference there if you were comparing a minivan to a suv for example but on the other hand honda odyssey behind that third row comes in at 32.8 cubic feet so substantially less there but total cargo space comes in at 144.9 cubic feet so carnival barely takes the win here when it comes to total cargo space so once again for friendly competition purposes although it's really not much of a difference when you take into account that total cargo space carnival is going to win this one again putting us at a score of three to one carnival is in the lead Next on my comparison list here is going to be the rear legroom. Very important in minivans because obviously 
you are more than likely going to have rear passengers. So when it comes to the Kia Carnival in the third row, that is going to come in at 35.6 inches of rear legroom for a reference. I am at even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Then when it comes to the second row, substantially more, of course, coming in at 40.5 inches. Again, I am an even six feet tall, plenty of space back there. Then when it comes to the other side of things, the 2022 Odyssey in the third row coming in at 38.1 inches. So substantially more than the Carnival in the third row. Again, this is how much space I had. And in the second row, actually the Odyssey does come in slightly more at 40.9 inches. So therefore Odyssey is going to win this particular comparison, putting us at a score three to two now. Kia Carnival barely in the lead. Next on my comparison list is going to be the warranty. This is very important. Obviously, if you have kids, if you have rear passengers, you don't want to spend money repairing your vehicle all the time. You'd rather use it, I'm sure, for spoiling your kids. But anyways, when it comes to Kia's warranty, of course, they do give you America's best warranty, which is going to be five years, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 years, 100,000 miles on the powertrain, which includes things like the engine, transmission, drive shaft, things like that. So that is a heck of a warranty, if I'm being honest. Then on the other hand, Honda's warranty is going to give you three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper, five year, 60,000 miles on the powertrain, which puts us at a score four to two. Carnival is in the lead. And I know what some people are thinking at this point, well, which one's more reliable? That actually leads us into my number four comparison being the reliability. And so when it comes to reliability, the only legitimate source I can give credit to out there is Consumer Reports because they do not take any money from any outside sources, including these automotive manufacturers. They do purchase all of their vehicles themselves to test out these reliability ratings but when it comes to the carnival they did rate it at an average reliability and so at this point you're thinking wait a second the carnival is brand new how are they even able to give it an average reliability rating well let me tell you guys carnival has been around across the world for quite some time now just not here in the u.s and a lot of these parts are carried over from the previous Sedona, which was Kia's previous minivan. So a lot of it is based on that reliability as well. And for example, the Kia Sedona in 2020 did score an average reliability as well, which had been out for quite a long time there at that point. But then on the other hand of things, the 2022 Odyssey, they did score a below average reliability. And what I've noticed, because I do buy all of those Consumer Reports magazines actually, Honda is kind of trending in the downside when it comes to reliability. And of course, Toyota is still absolutely killing it. If you are looking for the very most reliability when it comes to minivans, the Toyota Sienna is going to be the one you're looking at, but still, we are not doing that comparison, but that does mean the Carnival is going to win this reliability comparison, putting us at a score of five to two. Carnival is in the lead. Next on my list though is going to be the tech, and this is a huge comparison because believe it or not, both minivans do quite well here. And so when it comes to the Kia Carnival, it actually gives you a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that is available for this one. I love this thing. It completely changes the look when you change the driving modes. So many different ways you can customize it. I absolutely love that digital gauge cluster. Also a 12.3 inch color touchscreen infotainment display, tons of stuff up there you can play around with as well. And dual rear entertainment screens on the top trim level, of course, but with those dual rear entertainment screens, there is actually a kids app or a kids section within those screens that give you things like the Baby Shark app, YouTube Kids, and also Netflix as well, which I thought was pretty cool. So definitely a ton of tech there with the Carnival, but then on the other side of things with the 2022 Odyssey, you do not get a full digital gauge cluster with the Honda Odyssey, unfortunately. When it comes to the infotainment screen, that is an eight inch color touch screen display still has plenty available on it though we'll say that and then when it comes to the rear entertainment screen it is actually a 10.2 inch single rear entertainment screen but it does come with bluetooth connectivity and you can stream some apps on there if you wanted to you can actually also play blu-rays back there then as well so all in all larger screens with the carnival you do get digital gauges with the carnival as well and dual rear entertainment screens as opposed to one. So if you have two kids, they don't have to fight over what show they wanna watch. So I do like that. So Carnival is going to win the tech comparison, putting us at a score of six to two. Carnival is in the lead. 
Next on my comparison list here, making our way to number two, is going to be interior quality. And so, when it comes to the Kia Carnival, the thing that surprised me the most, honestly, is the lounge seats in the second row with the footrests that extend. And now, I will say, for my six foot self, I might not be able to fully take advantage of this because it was still a little bit snug for me. But for a kid, you are going to be able to take advantage of this quite nicely and definitely be quite comfortable back there. Also, heated and ventilated second row is available with the Carnival as well, which I found was pretty cool. 3D embossed accent trim in the front, which kind of ties in together with the exterior trim on the Carnival as well. And you actually get dual power moonroof, so one for the front passengers and then also one for the rear passengers as well. So all of that contributed to very nice interior quality for the Carnival, I will say that. And then, taking a look at the Honda Odyssey, you do get tri-zoom climate control like the Carnival. I will say that. So both of them get that. That's pretty cool. No lounge sheets, unfortunately. However, the thing with the Odyssey that the Carnival also did have, though, I do like that the seats can move both forward and back and from side to side as well. So that is definitely very nice. I was a big fan of that. No heated or ventilated rear seats for the Odyssey, unfortunately. And single moonroof is the only option available. So there's no rear moonroof for the Odyssey either. So all in all, if I'm being quite honest, every single reviewer I can guarantee you is going to give you this same answer this is not subjective this is very objective if anything the carnival is almost mercedes like believe it or not kia has come such a long way from where they used to be i'm telling you it's ridiculous so it's a very good interior quality needless to say for the carnival so carnival is obviously going to win this one putting us at a score of 72 carnival is in the lead and i know what you're thinking obviously carnival is going to win but when it comes to picking a minivan i did save the best for last and the most important for last being safety. And so when it comes to safety, you're obviously going to have very precious cargo in the second and third rows, being your children more than likely. When it comes to the Kia Carnival, is not yet tested by IIHS, so I will say that is typically what I use, as they're very reputable when it comes to crash test ratings and things like that. Standard safety, though, does include a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, which you usually don't get standard for all trim levels. I liked that. Rear parking sensors also coming standard and high beam assist, just to name a few. Then on the other hand, with the Honda Odyssey and is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which pretty much says it all right there. That is the very highest designation given by IIHS, so I love that. Honda Sensing Suite is going to come available with a ton of different safety features there. Automatic high beams, like I was just mentioning for the Carnival. No blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert available for the bottom trim level, but if you jump up simply just one trim level to the EX Odyssey, that is going to give it to you. Of course, higher trim levels than that as well. So since the Odyssey has a perfect rating with the IIHS and Carnival hasn't yet been tested, I'm going to easily give this one to the Odyssey. So Overall, 7-3 Carnival is going to win my comparison. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of these two, I do like both of these minivans quite a lot. And honestly, that is why I did this comparison, particularly as opposed to some of the options out there, because there are some other options, of course. You do have the Chrysler Pacifica. You also have the Toyota Sienna, like I was mentioning to you guys. That is the most reliable option, of course. I do prefer the Carnival's tech and the warranty and a lot of other stuff as well, but I do prefer the Odyssey steering feel. I will say the Kia Carnival did have quite a loose steering feel as opposed to the Honda Odyssey, which had kind of a heavier weight to it. So if you're into more driving dynamics, perhaps the Honda Odyssey might be the better choice for you, possibly. One thing both of them are missing, though, that the Sienna and the Pacifica, I believe, do have, at least available as an option, is all-wheel drive, which was very important because I did find myself spinning a couple times in the Carnival as well as the Odyssey, actually. So all-wheel drive is very important, especially if you live in Pennsylvania here like I do. Overall, though, the new Carnival did win my comparison, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily the best pick for you because everybody's situation, of course, is different. So it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the best pick for you. But having said that, let me know which you guys would pick in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold